Willis started our journey from Bali, an island province in Indonesia. It's home to 4 million Balinese. Today is one of the world's most popular tourist attractions for its renowned beaches, biodiversity, <laughs> nature, Hindu temples, and highly developed arts. Good news! Visitors from most countries enjoy visa on arrival or free 30 days exemption. There are buses available from major cities in Java with a ferry connection running 24 hours a day. From Bali's Depensar International Airport, fixed fare taxis and Uber are both available. So if you are going to take these two options, partner up with some fellow backpackers and share the fare. However, the most inexpensive option is a public bus near the roundabout. But lucky me, my couch surfing buddy and co-host is coming to pick me up on motorcycle and please ignore the safety laws. I did it at my own risk. By the way, thanks Bran. Next morning, we begin our day from the home base here in Kuta. But I'm not going anywhere until I get my local Indonesian breakfast. Gado gado known as lotak is an Indonesian salad consists of slightly boiled steamed vegetables, hard boiled eggs, fried tofu and tempeh served with a peanut sauce dressing. And I can't wait to give that a shot. The best way to get around Bali is a scooter, but make sure you have an international driver's permit along with your actual driver's license issued from your home country. Or else, you can get a temporary Balinese tourist driver's license available from the police station in Denpasar. We began our journey by exploring South Bali. Unexpectedly, we came across our first off-beaten path attraction. We came across this unusual scene a Boeing 737 abandoned by its owners here in the middle of the city. The kind of off the beaten path things that not that's not on the tourist map. And it's pretty magnificent by the way. Between October to April is the wet season for Bali and therefore you may get a complimentary 100% organic shower anytime, especially in the mornings. The upside, the popular attractions will not be crowded with tourists. Our first destination is the Oluwatu Temple, built in the 11th century and dedicated to the supreme god of Indonesian Hinduism. It's regarded as sixth holiest place of worship in Bali. There's no better way to show off this beautiful temple than my local co-host Bram, an Indonesian. Today we're in Pura Luhur Uluwatu. It's a Balinese sea temple. This temple holds a significance in Balinese people and it's very important tourist destination in Bali because of the magnificent view as you can see. Uluwatu in local language means edge of the cliff and as the name implies the temple is built at the edge of the cliff projecting to the sea. And inhabited by monkeys who are notorious for snatching visitors belongings. So watch out. Just few minutes away, we arrive at one of the most beautiful beaches in Bali, the Blue Point Beach. The layout of this beach is hidden at the base of the cliff. The main part of the beach has a width of approximately 15 meters and is also the entrance to the sea. The surfer consider this beach paradise as they get the best waves. Additionally, the beach itself is surrounded by rocks that always act as an umbrella shielding the excessive hot sun during the midday. Just few minutes away is another surfer's favorite beach, the Padam Padam Beach. The mission is free and the beach is very famous in the surfing community due to the size and the quality of the wave. Another nearby beach is also an off-beaten path attraction and rarely visited by tourists. Panawa Beach is not spoiled by tourists and considered Bali's hidden and secret beach that's very difficult to access due to located in a deep valley and surrounded by white stone cliff. I'm in uh, one of the best beaches in South Kuta and it's called Pandawa. And what's so interesting about this beach is the fact that you have to come down along that road but you get to see many of the deities carved right into the mountain. On the side of the cliff are the statue portraying the five brothers in the story Baha Bara, the legend of these five great warriors and the symbol of goodness. On our way to the peninsula island, we bump into something familiar. Yes, another abandoned plane. Another abandoned plane in the middle of nowhere. It's just really strange but fascinating. Uh, this is not something that you find on the tourist map. You can enjoy the vintage point free of charge from here or you can go around it and pay 5,000 uh, 5, rupiah 
your 50 cents to enjoy the view from up there. The last place we visit in the South Valley is Nuha Duha, meaning two islands. Consisting on the north side is Nuha Dharma Island and the south side Peninsula Island. This is an cave of a large five-star resort, but the park is open to the public free of charge. The park also have a large statue of Krishna and Arjun, the two great mythical figures found inside the great Indian epic Mahabad. One of the interesting places within the park is water below. As you can see, these are the natural rock formation caused by tidal waves. Uh, during the season when the waves are big, the water will literally splash to your face. That's why it, this place is called Water Bowl. The thing you see here is this is called tempeh. It's a traditional Indonesian food made from fermented soybean. Yeah, next. Before heading to our magnificent sunset, let's dive into my weakness, inexpensive local food. Lots of veggies. I, I definitely need to have some uh, protein, so I picked an egg. And yes, we just kept eating, including the Indonesian style meatballs. This one is called bakso. It's Indonesian meatballs. It consists of this thing, as you can see, the meatballs. And you can see some white noodles there. And this is the drink that I have. Is it's called es jeruk. This is a lemon drink. Bali has some of the most breathtaking sunsets, and we recommend you end your day at Tanlot Temple. The name means land, sea in Balinese language, and the temple sits on a large offshore rock, which has been shaped continuously over the years by the ocean tides. So this is the temple of Tanalot. I guess today we're very lucky because we're here. Currently it's, the tide is slow and we're, we're able to get into the main temple without getting wet. This is, this is the best, truly the best time to visit this place, Tanalot. And it's also nice to see sunset here. I'm going to go in and have my face wash on the holy water and be blessed, I guess. I just got, I think I, I just got blessed. All right. <laughs> With rice on my, face, uh, on my head, I think. It's one of the most popular tourist and cultural icons for photography in Bali. The temple has been part of Balinese mythology for centuries. However, it is significantly influenced by Hinduism. At the base of the rocky island, the venomous sea snakes are believed to guard the temple from evil spirits and intruders. We went to sleep after a long, exhausting day. Next day, our usual routine. Mmm, eat and eat some more. This time, authentic Indonesian kanji. Uh, we're eating what uh, is like called bubur ayam. It's like Indonesian version of kanji. Yeah. So as you can see, we have rice porridge. Mm -hmm. And what are those right there? Uh, some, uh, this, this are, uh, Quail eggs. Quail eggs? Yes. Really? Today, we'll be riding our scooter to North Bali around the city of Yuba. It's a cultural center of the island and despite being only 40 kilometers away, it's a quite a contrast to Kuta. This is a village of only 30,000 surrounded with small farms, rice paddies, and dense forests. This is what we recommend if you prefer peace and quiet. Yuba is pretty compact. Most attractions are easily accessible on foot, and here's one of them that won't cost you a single penny. So on the way to our next temple, we drove by the city center and we bumped into unintentionally bumped into the Uber Palace. The palace is the official residence of loyal family of Uba, as a considered a focal landmark located on the main road. The compound was built during the lordship of late A Ta Putu Kendo, and mostly after the 1917 earthquake. The local loyal family still lives here, and is well kept by his successor heirs. To the opposite side of the palace on the main road is a Uba art market, known for its high quality traditional and handmade clothing, figurines, and houseware, and also featured in the movie Eat, Pray, Love. 
if you're going to buy something, you need to bargain. Fifty thousand is too steep. I'm not buying. Forty thousand. Forty thousand. Thirty thousand. Ah no, more, little bit more. Thirty-one thousand. No. No. Thirty-one thousand. Okay, 100. okay, thirty-five. You happy? Me happy. Can we By the way, is this like is it? a tourist trap, and you yes. need to barking harder than me. After, after lunch. By luck, our filming was delayed to witness the rare event, the cremation ceremony of village first ordained Hindu high priest. Passed away at age of 96, that had carried out his priest duties for more than 50 years. So actually, uh, I was actually puzzled when the, the street was jammed up while we are heading our, to our monkey fort. You tell now, this is actually a cremation ceremony for high priests here in Bali. The high status is reflected by the bowl shaped wooden sarcophagus and lowest shaped tower in a traditional Balinese ceremony called Nagaben. It's Balinese word for cremation of the dead, in which the soul is released entirely from the body to ascend to heaven and to be reincarnated. This is considered the last and the most important ceremony of every Balinese life. There are three stages, the funeral and the cremation. They just finished the food offering, putting all the food offering inside the casket and they are preparing to burn the body along with the food of the offering. Now, as you can see around, no one's actually crying because Balinese believes in uh, reincarnation. So this is just a passage to another life. The final stage is purification, which can I happen 12 can days them. after the cremation, where the ashes was placed in a white and yellow cloth transported on a beautiful construction to the sea. The ashes are placed in the water with the purpose of soul being released to a higher level. From there, the soul can follow the final stage of reincarnation. 